was not the answer and has not been for a long time. At that time, we were successful in getting some enrolls in terms of educational programs for people who were incarcerated. We thought about doing a similar ban the box kind of legislation, but it just was not the time to do it. The state was not ready, the country was not ready for that. So, two years ago, a young man came into my office, very well dressed, very articulate young man. He presented his resume to me and he said, Senator, uh, I was incarcerated, I've been out for about 10 years now. I've reunited with my family. Um, I have my BA. I even have my black seal. Now, you know what that means. I really didn't know what a black seal was, um, but it has something to do with plumbing or boilers. Okay. <laughs> and he said that he was volunteering um, in the Boys and Girls Club in Jersey City, and he was even involved in his church. And I said, well, what can I do for you? He said, I need a job. So I said, you're not working. He said, no, I have a job. I said, where do you work? He said, McDonald's. So I looked at his resume closer, and I said, well, there's a gap here. Um, but you've been out for quite a while. Why is that what you have? He said, every time I fill out an application, I never hear from my employer, from a prospective employer. And I listened to him, and I almost had tears in my eyes because he talked about how he wanted the kind of job that would provide for his family long term. He wanted the job that provided health benefits. He wanted the job that provided a pension. He wanted the job that provided an opportunity for advancement. When he left the office, tears came to my eyes, and I thought, oh my god. If I can't help someone like him, I don't need to be sitting at this desk. I don't need to call myself state senator if I cannot help someone like him. At that point, I reached out to <coughs> Cornell Brooks at the Institute of Social Justice and said, Cornell, it's time again. I reached out to Assemblywoman Bonnie Watson Coleman and said, this has to be the time. For two years, we started working, and I decided that the best approach for this would be, I wanted to get the businesses on our side. You know, when we tried this, and it's called Ban the Box, but actually the name of the legislation is the Opportunity to Compete Legislation. And I thought that one of the problems that we had the last time we tried this was that the businesses were automatically against it. We spent two years traveling, I spent two years traveling around the state meeting with every business entity that I could meet with. And I tried to bring them with me. As a matter of fact, we've had so many, and Governor McGreevy saw some of the early versions of this legislation. We've had so many versions of this legislation. I can't even tell you the number of it because it's just been so many, because every time we met with a business entity, we tried to be fair. We did not want businesses to feel that we were putting them in a situation that they would be <coughs> legally responsible if they decided not to hire someone based upon the fact that when they found out that they did have a criminal history, uh, that they would be sued or they would be attacked in some way. So we tried to make it business friendly as much as possible, but we also wanted to make sure that people got a clear opportunity. And that's what this legislation does. It gives people an opportunity to fill out a job application and not have to answer a question such as, have you ever had a criminal record? Have you ever been arrested? Uh, have you ever been incarcerated? Have you ever had any problems with the um, criminal justice department. If you check yes on that, then you're jeopardizing yourself. Now one of the things, and I know Keith is probably wondering about this, because one of the things that you learned in One Stop and everywhere else, if you send someone out who has been incarcerated out for a job interview, you tell them never lie. If you're asked, 
say yes. And that's what we've been telling people for years and years and years. And then those same people, in most cases, come back because they never got the job. We still want you to say yes, but this law says that if someone comes in, they don't have to, that you cannot ask them over the telephone. They do not have to check a box on an application. You look at them from a business perspective and see their qualifications. You bring them in for an interview, and only after the interview has been completed do you ask, do you have a criminal background? Now, if a person comes in and wants to talk about it before then, then of course they can do that. This just gives a person an opportunity, like the young man who came to me and made me realize how important this is. If I just looked at him on paper, I would have been, yeah, he's interesting, but he does have a criminal record. If I compared his resume to someone else who had the exact same qualification and didn't have a criminal record, I might have been, well, let me go with the person, you know, he doesn't have a criminal record, it's straight. But by talking to him and realizing, to develop that relationship in 10, 15 minutes, that I can hear what he's saying and seeing what he felt would have made a difference. And that's all we're doing. We're giving people an opportunity. I believe this legislation is important because it can change lives. In the final analysis, the business community um, has accepted the legislation. They did not, they came and spoke in support of it before the Senate. Well, not exactly in support of it. <laughs> They just didn't talk against it. They sat there mum and thanked me for all the work I've done. But they are now starting to educate their memberships to this law. Uh, the Labor Department is now beginning to set up the structure needed to address issues that will come out of it. But the important thing is we have a responsibility um, as human beings, as Americans to give people an opportunity to change your lives. It does not work well if all we have is people who are applying for jobs who are just great on paper. When you ride around places such as Jersey City where my district is or Camden or Trenton or Newark, you see and here, Atlantic City, if you go beyond the boardwalk, you will see people standing on corners. And not just because they want to stand on corners. <coughs> I mean, standing after a while gets to be a drag. There's some of them, I dare say most of them, if given an opportunity, would rather have a job than stand on corners. Um, we have Walmart here, and I'm not going to say, I want to say all great things about Walmart because I want one to come to Jersey City. But I do congratulate them on what they're doing on, on everything they've done in terms of giving jobs. But there are so many businesses that, I'm sorry, not Walmart, Whole Foods. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I was about to say Walmart. But we have places, businesses such as Walmart that took the app, that question off of their application long ago. They do not ask if you apply for a job, anything about your criminal background. I um, spent time talking to them. There are other businesses all around the country that are giving up asking because they have found that the ex-offender that they hire is usually the best employee because people want to work. We've had a couple of job fairs in Jersey City through uh, Governor McGreevy, and one I can just recently, the line all around the corner and down the street with people coming to apply for jobs because they want to work. I was on a panel recently, I did a television program, and 
we were talking about gangs, and one of the things that someone said, because we do have a lot of gang activities, um, oh, well, you can't get someone who's in a gang and take them and give them a little job because they're used to making thousands of dollars by selling drugs. Uh, on the program was someone who works a lot with gangs, and his response to that was, that's not true. It's only the higher-ups in the drug industry that make a lot of money. These other people, the kids that are doing it, are not making a lot of money. And he said, in his opinion, he believed that many of them, if given an opportunity for some kind of employment, would rather have the employment. Because what comes with employment is dignity and self-respect. And I believe that everyone innately wants that. I believe that everyone innately wants that. And I believe that all of you, if you're working in one stops or doing anything to try to help people get jobs, you believe that as well. You believe that as well. So I do want to just sit down now because I don't want twin number, uh, the tall twin, <laughs> taller twin to pull my, uh, my arm. But... <laughs> You know, I just want to, uh, to thank you for everything that you're doing because you're in the trenches. You see what I see all the time. And I do want to just remind you that when you see people, treating people with respect is important no matter who they are or what they're doing or what they're not doing. They deserve respect. They not only deserve respect, they, need, they also deserve an opportunity to become productive citizens. They deserve a second chance.